Good morning and a very warm welcome to Uddingston Old Parish Church Worship Service, which is online. On this, our third Sunday in Lent. And because we're travelling through Lent, we are continuing our journey towards Jerusalem and the cross. A journey which changes pace and challenges us in our own faith and our own perception of Christ. And today we look at an aspect of Christ's personality which can make us feel uncomfortable with, that Christ experiences anger and reacts to his anger. And many of us who have grown up in faith to that meek and mild image of Christ may find it counterintuitive to be contemplating Christ's anger, particularly when he witnesses what the religious leaders leaders, the money change changers, are practising in the house of God and how it prevents those who want to experience the presence of God who are prohibited. And yet that is part of Christ's humanity, to experience anger. And I don't know about you, but I find some comfort knowing that Christ, being fully human, experiences many of the emotions that we feel in our own lives. So this morning... Wherever we have gathered, let us journey on through Lent and let us give thanks. For this is God's house and it is God who bids us all welcome. And that we are God's people and it is God who bids us welcome. So wherever you have gathered, whether it be with empty hands or full hearts, God is the one who bids us welcome. So come and let us worship God. taken from John chapter 2 verses 13 to 22. Jesus goes to the temple. It was almost time for the Passover festival so Jesus went to Jerusalem. 
There, in the temple, he found men selling cattle, sheep and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. So he made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins, and he ordered the men who sold the pigeons, Take them out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that the scripture says, My devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities replied with a question. What miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Jesus answered, Tear down this temple and in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? they asked him. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from death, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. Amen. Our passage today is one of the ugliest, scariest, hardest and meanest passages in scripture. For we see Jesus erupting in anger, turning tables over, whipping people with cords. And to top it off, this scene takes place in his father's house, the temple. And it's an image of Jesus we don't often see, the angry, the frustrated, the loud Jesus against that meek and mild Jesus image that many of us have grown up with. But isn't it the case that over the years, the church has often portrayed a picture of Jesus who is quiet, calm and reserved. Yet this image is only half the picture as we hear from our gospel verses today. So the question we must ask is what is Jesus' problem? What makes him react the way he did during the encounter at the temple? So what we have to do is we have to remember is that this takes place during the Passover season. And we shouldn't forget that a key element of the Passover narrative was always the presence of Israel's God himself with his people. In the pillar of cloud and fire and then apparently more permanently in the tabernacle. Therefore, from a biblical perspective, the Passover implies presence, the presence of God. And for the ordinary people of Israel, the temple was the house of God. It housed the Ark of the Covenant. The temple was central to everything. The place where heaven and earth met, the building in which God and his people came together. God's presence was in the temple in Jerusalem and it's a time of unleavened bread, lamb and herbs. It's a time of sacrificial lambs and pilgrimage to the temple in Jerusalem to offer prayer. And within the grounds of the temple which we read in scripture when Jesus arrived with his disciples to prepare themselves to observe the Passover, the scene that greets him is in some ways the final straw for him. For what greets him are traders selling cattle, sheep and doves, others sitting at tables exchanging money. And the word court means the outer courtyard of the temple rather than the inner sanctum, so to speak. In fact, and more importantly, for our understanding of this gospel story, the temple courtyards was the place reserved for the Gentiles to worship. But we read in the scriptures that in the place of the Gentiles, that is the non-Jews, who wanted to worship God nevertheless, but hadn't gone through the ritual to become Jews, that space entitled to them was reserved for them to worship, had been taken up with a whole variety of stalls selling all sorts of commodities, especially related to the Passover ritual of sacrifice and those changing money. Indeed, pilgrims, Jewish and Gentiles alike, came from foreign lands far away, and they needed to exchange their coin into temple currency. 
And in addition to changing their money, they would need to buy animals for sacrifice. So to an extent, the traders were providing an essential service to those who desired to make themselves right before God. But what had begun with the intention of providing a service had in actual fact became a disservice. Traders making large profits from the religious needs of the faithful. So Jesus reacts against the fact that non-Jewish people were being prevented from worshipping God. And it was the traders who were cheating the worshippers by charging unfair exchange rates. And in his anger, Jesus rebels against the unjust practices that are preventing people getting close to God in worship, and quite rightly so. And what I find reassuring about the passage is the fact that we have permission to stand up and speak out against the injustices of our time, the unfair practices, the attitudes of our day, that is our calling if we follow Jesus Christ, when injustices are there and we can see and we do nothing. And if we believe that we are stewards of God's creation, then we need to be involved in various issues, involved in particular with the environmental crisis that is engulfing our world. If we believe that all people matter, then we must speak up for those who are persecuted the most in our society. If we are appalled by the rise in food banks, homelessness, the daily struggle many families are facing, then we need to be that voice that will speak out and offer a helping hand. If we believe in the scriptures, if we believe that everyone should be equal, that there is a place for everyone in God's family, then we are called to follow, to serve, and to speak out. What you've got to understand is that Jesus was not rebelling against God in that moment. He wasn't saying that the whole religious system was wrong and had to be thrown out. He was saying that there were flaws and problems in how people were providing services associated with the temple and it needed to change for the better. Jesus Christ stood up and reacted to all that was wrong with society, all that was wrong with the temple, all that was ungodly. And as he did, he ruffled some feathers because of his actions. He did not shy away from his calling or follow others. He chose not to be like others when in Rome do as the Romans do. Jesus Christ believed that there is a better way a more just and a fair way, a more Christ-like way, and we can all learn from his actions. And yes, there will be times when what we feel God is leading to us will be different from what others around us are advocating and doing. But here's the thing. We don't always have to be mild in nature. We don't always have to fit in. We don't always have to do what our neighbours do. And we don't need to compare our church against other churches, against other denominations. We can be the church, the godlike worshipping community that we are called to be. As long as we allow God to lead us, we do whatever we have to do to follow God's will. As long as we are true to the scriptures, true to God, and true to ourselves as well. Yes, we can be rebellious if you want to use that terminology, as long as the end result is to be more Christ like, to co create with God the kingdom of justice, of peace, of joy in all its fullness here on this earth. And I want to be honest with all of you. I long to be part of a community who is not afraid to be different, who is not afraid to look in a different direction, not to be changed to the memories of the past. And we have an opportunity 
as we gradually move away from this pandemic to seriously think of what our worshipping community will look like over the coming months ahead? What are the things that we are passionate about? What are the worries that we have? What makes us want to change this world? And if we have that, those ideas, then coming together, we can change the way we are, change our worshipping community, take it in a new direction. Call us rebellious if you want, call us rebels, but we have a cause. So to all those rebels within the Christian communities who are fed up being suppressed, being ignored, being criticised for their beliefs, who will not become just like the Joneses, let them stand up. Let all of us stand up and be counted, be heard together. And I will stand with you. So yes, call me a rebel. Call me whatever you want. But together, we will be collectively rebels with a cause, God's cause. And nothing or nobody will stand in our way, for we are doing God's work. Yes, this community, this worshipping community can be meek and mild, just like Jesus. But don't step on the toes of the people who are passionate about their faith, who are determined to continue to grow God's kingdom here in Addingston, here in the wider community. Jesus was angry at times with the attitudes and the actions of those who were preventing people from coming to God. We are not that community. We are a community which is open to young, to young in faith, to those who have journeyed in faith for a long time, for those who don't always fit into society. There is a place here for all of us. For we are a community, a worshipping community, a church, a church that is full of grace, but not perfection. So I offer this invitation to each one of you and to your neighbours and to your friends. If you want to be part of this worshipping community, you will be made most welcome. Yes, we may rebel. Yes, we may not follow the norms of society. But that is the point. We are followers of Jesus Christ. So who will join me? Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Righteous God, we pray for those who work to promote justice in our world. Those who campaign for fair trade and an easing of international debts. For just sharing of the earth's resources. For freedom of conscience and basic human rights. From, for deliverance from dictatorships and the establishing of democracy. Lord of all, grant them encouragement and support in their struggle for change. Righteous God, we pray for those who work to promote justice in our communities, those who pass laws in our parliament, who administer them in our courts, who deal with offenders in prisons, remand centres or the local community and who strive to uphold law and order in our society. Grant them wisdom in all that they do. Righteous God, we pray for those who work for justice in our own societies, who petition for the poor and disadvantaged, who fight abuse and exploitation in all its many forms, who support the cause of the wrong and the falsely accused, who stand up against crime 
and corruption. Grant them courage and integrity. O righteous God, we know that you want us to deal justly with one another, to work for the good of all rather than a few. And we thank you that they are those with sufficient courage to respond to that challenge and with sufficient passion to devote their lives to those ends. Support them in all they do and inspire us to pursue such goals in turn. Righteous God, Lord of all, hear our prayers as we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Well, my friends, it's, our time is just about over. It's great to be back with you. We certainly enjoyed our holiday there. So thank you for all your kind wishes to, to tell me to, to have a relaxing fortnight off. And I did. So it's good to be back. Good to be back in front of you all, wherever you have gathered. And I hope everyone is well at this time. Um, so my friends, remember just to keep in touch with each other. And even with myself, phone me, email me, text me, do whatever. Um, and remember to stay connected with your families and friends. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, until we meet again, stay safe, stay well, stay connected with each other and with God. So go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Oh,